Hi there guys and girls, this is Ben Effler. This is a, a video in connection with my previous video that I uploaded. Uh, you can check the previous video in the top right hand corner. It's regarding adding your own custom normals to your Total War mod. Uh, I realised that I didn't actually show how I created my custom normal in the first place. So this is a video showing you how I created from a diffuse texture a normal in Quixel to then use uh, uh, for my Warhammer Minotaur retexture project. I'm just loading up a colour map and the uh, ambient occlusion map because I, I obviously need everything loaded up so I can I can work off on top of it. Uh, but what I'm going to do is rather than sit and make textures and stuff, I'm just going to import the flesh texture that I made from my Minotaur that didn't require its own custom normal and use that just so the mesh isn't grey, it's just so it looks nicer personally and it makes it easier to see to make sure my new fur layer looks good on top of it so anyway I've made a project, added the colour map, added the ambient occlusion, imported a previously made diffuse as its own layer so I can visually see the model with the texture on and then all I need to now do is load up the the separated fur layer, the layer that needed its own normal map uh, and what I done was actually 3D painted the layer in Mudbox. So I've actually not copied the file into my assets folder so I'm going to navigate to my Minotaur's uh, Mudbox folder and just uh, obviously copy and paste it into the proper folder. So having the fur on it, the fur layer which is the layer that needs its own custom normal um, on its own layer is super useful because it means I'm only generating normals for that layer and because that layer's on its own it means I can like overlap it on top of um, other layers and I can, it's easier to isolate to paste it in and like I say it's easier to paste it with an existing normal which I do in the my other video um, but yeah this is me just pasting it in uh, all I need is the layer and a background layer so I can square up the image. So what I do first is I get rid of the wireframe. I merge the two layers together. Um, you can't see the option, but it's just I'm um, just merging those two layers, and then I can delete one of these layers, and I'll, I'll select both. Then I'll square it up and make sure that it's centered with my screen, and we're pretty much good to go. That's us sorted with the 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 diffuse so we can actually view it and we can see how the fur layer looks on top of my skin layer and uh, I'll take a little minute for the uh, 3D to, to launch up everything here but there we can see you can visually see the fur but it doesn't really look that interesting it's very flat to the head it's uh, you know a, it just looks like it's been painted on the flesh so what we're going to do is rectify that by giving it a little bit more volume so I'm just now going to rename my layer just so I can just uh, make things visually easier to, to spot and see. I lowered the opacity there to 84%. Um, and I'm just moving the, the light round so you can see that there's no, you know, there's nothing. It's just a texture. There's no normal added to it. And by the end of the video, you're going to see that the hair will have a very stylized look. Um, so what I'm now doing is opening up my normal fold, uh, normal layer that, that, Quixel generated and I don't need this 3D window open just now. I'm going to pull the normal layer off to one side on my other monitor so I can just easily click and drag the fur layer that I've merged with and lowered the opacity off and pull that into the normal uh, layer. I just did that so I didn't have to repeat the processes. I'm obviously going to select the layers so I can square them up make sure they're in line with the, the UVs. And then all I need to do is copy the fur layer and then um, pull it out of that folder. It needs to be on its own. It can't be inside a folder. So I've pulled it out. Obviously, you can see it's still the layer when it's selected still has that 84% opacity. So that's just a, a little heads up that it still retains the all the effects we've done in the the albedo channel, which it's called. Um, so now, now that that's renamed, I'm going to pull that down below the folder and then I'm going to go and click up on the left hand corner uh, I'm going to click on endo and then endo gives me this little option here so you just click that window and then it generates a normal which um, is very subtle and we want to sort of make it a little bit more pronounced so these settings work for this particular asset you'll have to probably do some messing around if you're sort of following along this sort of step is very dependent on what you're trying to achieve 
So for example, I'm choosing the you know embossed and uh, on the on the uh, the the bevel option. I'm making sure everything's set to one hundred. I'm making sure the size is set to ten, and then I'm changing the the depth then to six 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 rather than nine 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 just to make it that you know a little less sharp. It's a bit maybe it's a bit too dramatic. But again, these options are all dependent on what you're doing. So please be sure to, you can either pause the video, look at what I've set, or you can mess around um, and experiment. And I'm going to show you now the three do. You'll see the the normals on the the what was previously a flat looking hair texture has now got that little bit more volume to it. You see on the sides of the cheek the the lights hitting it. Uh, you'll see when I put it into full shade. You'll see under the necks catching a bit, you know, a tiny bit of light. It looks a little bit more bumpier. Uh, it's a stylized look. It's not a realistic look. It's maybe more of a cartoony sort of like model look, similar to maybe the Games Workshops uh, models. But yeah, that's pretty much all. That's all I did to generate a normal. Uh, what I also do is I, I'll move the camera, and so you can see, you know, you see how it, it looks. You know, it's bumpy. It's got some definition, and it's exactly what I wanted to go for. And it's the same normal style that I apply to the other two layers of the Minotaur. So once you're happy with the uh, the look of the normal, all you need to now do is, there's an option underneath my lower third, my lower corner logo there, and it's, uh, it's toggle the zip. Once that's toggled, it'll put in its own little folder structure, and then all you then need to do is uh, pr press save pretty much. You can close off endo now, we don't need it. So you can close endo by close, Clicking on the X or just clicking on the uh, button on the top, uh, the button on the top right, uh, and yeah, just save the project. I hope this video has helped you out. If it has, uh, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more videos like this, and obviously you can ring the bell to get notified with, on any of my uploads. Um, I, I really do appreciate all the support, so thank you in advance. As always, I've been Ben, and you've been awesome.